Why, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is I, the Copper Owl, bringing you a review on the Nerf Doomland Lawbringer. Yes, I am the law. Well, anyway, so this is a. So this is the most expensive. No, this is not this. So this is the Doomlands Lawbreaker. It's one of the um, hammer action blasters. Now that you know, I have to collect all of them. And so this one was like a white whale for me for a while. Because I couldn't find one. And then I just like one day it just hit me like, go to Goodwill. They're going to have it. And they had it. And then since then, I think I found another. And now I have another one. And I don't know if I have a third one. I might have found a third one and I didn't buy it. Yeah. But since then I had I hadn't painted a blaster except for the, I paint I painted a Doomlands blaster. And I did not enjoy that process. So But that was back when I was just I was taping everything and all that. Like it wasn't painting a, a base coat. So this time I'm thinking about... That's why I have the scope on it. I'm going to paint it to be kind of like Boba Fett's blaster. But it's going to be... Um, in my steampunk kind of configuration. Because it's supposed to be the skull gun without the um, the skull on it. That's the idea. But, you know, I did that with Sledge Fire as well. But it, this is probably going to be more accurate. So anyway, let's get on to the review. Oh, first advertisement. Buy my book. The Epic of Cassius Crossroads at AuthorHouse.com. Yeah, so book two is going to be almost done. I still got to finish one last chapter and edit and my notes as well. So, yeah, th just so I've been busy, so I haven't been writing, and I hate that I haven't been doing that. But tomorrow is the day off, so should be good. Should be finishing tomorrow. So anyway, let's get on to, to business. So, FPS, I, this, is, this blaster has one of those barrels where it's pretty wide, so I can't really measure the FPS properly. And I looked up videos, and for some reason, some of them didn't even have the FPS in it. So, I only got 60 the time I actually managed to get a target through it, so... I'm gonna go with that. So I'm gonna say it's bad on FPS. It could be okay, but with what I see, it's bad. Accessories, it did not come with any accessories, but it does have its own built-in ammo holder in the stock. I think was neat, but I feel like yeah, we're gonna to get to that in a little bit. So um, accessories, no. Sling attachment point. Technically, it does have one. It does have one right here thin little thing but that's it and that's not a good spot for a sling attachment point really oh wait no no there's another one at the front and I yeah that doesn't make any sense for either of those and I'm gonna get to that in a bit so that's bad comfort well here's one of my gripes about this blaster and it goes into with the comfort I love Boba Fett's blaster. I love um, Wild West carbines, which this te this is. I, I love SBRs. I love the idea of a revolver rifle. This stock is terrible. Like it doesn't really get in the way as much, but as you look at my hand, my hand's pressed against it. It shouldn't be that way. My hand should be more like this. So that bothers me. Because my hand, there's ergonomics with this. Like I'm at an angle. I shouldn't be at an angle. I should be able to hold it perfectly straight. And all that. But it's not that big of a deal if you try to rest it against your shoulder. So when you do that, it's not bad. So. But it's still like I feel it all the time. And with the stock, I felt like, oh, if this thing is supposed to be kind of like. It, I felt like the stock should have been like an actual container. Like this should have all been just a container. Because back in the day, 
this is why the sling doesn't really work. Back in the day, black, um, firearms that had attachable sot docks on them, whether it be the Luger, the Mauser, the um, there was a, a or several types of revolvers that had a detachable stock that could be put on it. The stock was actually a f type of holster, and when room and the holster could be um, could, some of them had like. Con storage containers for extra bullets. So I thought that that would have been more better if they had just re redesigned the stock to not be like the way it is and had like a container. I think that would have been a lot better because we know we had... Nerf could make stocks that are containers. So yeah. So you, you're pressing the darts against your your shoulder when you put it on. Do you have a dart near me? I do, technically. To show it off. But it's not that big of a deal, really. It's just... It looks like that. It's fairly tight in there. And all that. And how do you take them out? Well, you pull them in the back. Pretty good. It just depends on how far out they are. And I guess while you're pulling them out, you load it in like that. Let me. So you pull it out and while you're putting it in there, you kind of adjust it with your hands. Versus pulling them out from here because you can see, oh, trying to adjust it, sticking out wrong. So yeah, it's definitely like meant to be that way. Yeah, that's the more easier version. I think the motion of you pulling the dart out, like this sort of tip is facing outwards towards you. It's a bit more fluid. But no, no, I'm pretty sure the dart's tip is supposed to be on this side. It's a pretty big blaster too, so it's kind of in the way. So comfort, I um, I'm, I'm very mixed about it because it's something I dis personally dislike and I think it should be better. But it's not like it doesn't hurt me. It doesn't pinch me. It's not a big deal. But there's also the part where, like, the front is just square, as you can see. And I put my hand right there, and I feel like if this was more of an angle, but I understand why it's not. But it's still a little awkward. It's just awkward. Then you have this part right here that you're supposed to grip onto. And that's in the way of your, of your cylinder. My, my hands touch it. So, oddly enough, that's more accurate to the actual thing that you'd like. Some of them you would have to rotate manually on your own. When you do that, and you have to kind of put your hand like right here. And all that because um, you, you could blow off your hand. And it's really hot. That's why they're not, that's why they're not really that much of a thing. So, yeah. So I want to say comfort is okay. Looks, I think this thing looks cool. Again, it has a it has a very steampunky look. I could see this in a sci-fi movie. Like I could paint this all gr black and silver, sci-fi gun. I could paint it black, um, gunmetal gray with bronze, steampunk gun. I could paint it all silver with some green and sci-fi gun. It's just. It looks great. Profile in all black. I don't. It could look like a blaster. It it could look like a firearm. So in that case, but it's like it's very. I'm gonna say it's okay. I could see somebody think of it as a firearm if it was painted all black. But I could also see like it's just kind of. Its proportions are so off that someone might think it's, oh uh, yeah, this is a toy. Now, tactical points. This is interesting because it has the, the top scope one. As you can see with the scope. But it also has one up front over here. So... See that? And I'm like, 
why? Like, why does it have that? And I don't know. I honestly don't know why, but it doesn't bother me. And I, yeah, I just, it doesn't bother me. And I'm also considering things like built-in ammo storage as tactical points. So you could, so you can put the dart holders onto the um, the tactical rails here, and you get two of them. So there you go. That's a plus eight, or if you got the big one and the small one, it could be like a lot more. I forget how much does the big one hold, 10 or eight. So yeah, I'm, I'm saying tactical points are good. You can't use the rockets. You can't use the mega. It's internals, you can see right there. It's fairly simple. Modability. This is interesting in that this blaster is very moddable, but it's like not an easy mod, not like something that a kid could do. You have to. This blaster is modded to just be sawed off, which is kind of interesting because of what it is, Doomlands and all that. But they also take off the stock and they just turn it into a pistol. That's really it. But there's a pistol version of this blaster. So, yeah. Why do that? I don't know. I feel like you're wasting money. Just get the pistol version. I, they want the extra, the two extra darts, and I'm like, no, I don't think that's really worth it. And all that. So, and I believe you could upgrade the spring. I'm not sure. Yeah. So, modability is good. Practicality. Now. You can guns akimbo it. You can use two of them at the same time. And hold it holds 10 darts. It has its own ammo storage and all that. Is that practical compared to um, other blasters? Especially hammer action blasters. Well, it's more practical than the hammer shot. But it's still a long blaster. It doesn't have good sling attachment point and all that. It's fairly thick. And all that, so it's it's weird, in and because the hammer action, the thing that makes a hammer burst in the sweet revenge so good is is just that they can be put in your pocket or held together with a string. This you can't do that. This is the size of a primary. So unless so, no, it's not impractical. But, like, I don't think it's bad enough not to use. Like, if this was in a loaner box, I would definitely grab it. So I'm going to say it's okay practically. There are, like, other better blasters. There's better blasters. It's just... in like, you could have a Strife. You could have a Retaliator and all that stuff. But compared to the Hammer Action Blasters, this one has the most capacity. So for which is a game of hammer action blasters, yes, it's very practical. You say it's okay. Price, I got I've gotten these for various prices and all that. And I don't remember how much this thing cost online. So I'm just gonna say okay, because I don't know the price on the top of my head. But again, it's one of those blasters like seven dollars, perfectly fine. Anything under seven dollars. Perfectly fine. So let's see what the results are. We've got four good. Five bad and four good. So technically it's a bad blaster. It really leans onto the okay. But it's very much it's just bad in that it's very um it's to its gimmick. You can't really do much with it. But it, it'll make for a good cosplay blaster. And I, I'm asking you in, in the comments, should I paint over the clear part and all that? So, and you can pretty much guess this right now. This is not a skip. This is a novelty. If you want this blaster for cosplay, perfectly good. If you want it for your collection, perfectly good. Because there's no more Doomlands and it's a small collection. And if you want it for a game, it's like it's not the worst thing out there. It's actually pretty decent. And all that but it because of what it does but it's yeah compared to a hammer storm okay more ammo capacity and it 
holds more ammo than the hammer storm. But the hammer storm's smaller and has a better sling attacker point. Probably even performs better. But the lawbringer, on the other hand, compared to the hammer storm, is actually more common. I don't know why. It just is. So. Thank you all very much, ladies and gentlemen. You all have a nice day. Bye-bye.